everyone and welcome po sa ating YouTube channel. So ayan na nga po at ako ay nagma-vlog vlog na din. Kasi batid ko po na napakaraming teachers lalo na sa Pilipinas ang gustong mag-abroad. Pero hindi nila alam kung ano nga ba yung mga bagay-bagay na dapat nilang ihanda. Like yung mga dokumento na dapat nilang ihanda. Ano yung mga steps na gagawin. So there's no uh, shortcut kasi sa pag-abroad. Talagang lahat tayo dadaan tayo sa nakakalito, sa mabusisi at of course magastos na paraan. At mas lalong nakakalito kapag tayo ay hindi guided or kung hindi natin alam kung saan tayo magsisimula. So ako, nakapag-decide ako na gumawa ng series of videos na kung saan ating hihimayin, ipapaliwanag yung mga bagay-bagay pertaining sa pag-apply abroad. So from the very basic hanggang doon sa mga yung mga pinakamahalaga na dapat nating uh, gawin o dapat nating sudin para at least uh, we will not lose on, on on our track. So, mahalaga na meron tayong plano pero mas mahalaga na meron din tayong gabay. Uh, so, sa mga videos na atin pong gagawin, sisikapin po natin na maipaliwanag or matalakay ang uh, mga concerns ninyo at syempre masagot din yung inyong mga katanungan So to begin with, para sa ating pinakaunang serye, pinakaunang video natin Ang ating pag-uusapan ay tungkol sa mga basic na requirements for aspiring teachers in Vietnam You may also refer sa mga slides po na makikita ninyo sa ating screen Para po kayo ay makarelate at makasabay sa ating mga pag-uusapan At the same time, magbibigay din po tayo ng mga tips na mga key points that you need to remember And at the same time, sasagutin din po natin yung inyong mga possible questions And I'm actually looking at my código right here in front of me Kasi gusto kong ibigay sa inyo yung pinakadetalyado at komprehensibong information. And just to make it clear lamang, hindi po ako recruiter, hindi rin po ako nang re-recruit, hindi rin po ako parang tawag dito nangungumbinsi na mag-abroad kayo, ganito, ganyan. Ang akin lamang po ay ang magbigay ng gabay doon sa mga taong interesado na mag-abroad. Kasi basically nasa sa inyo po ang desisyon kung kayo ay mag-abroad or hindi. Okay? Para lamang po at least klaro sa lahat. Okay. So, to begin with, ang pinakaunang requirement na dapat ninyo i-comply ay ang inyong diploma or transcript of school records. So, here are the things that you need to remember. First, college or postgraduate degree are both acceptable. So, ibig sabihin, pwede na ang ating gamitin as our uh, proof na meron tayong degree is yung ating college degree or baccalaureate degree. Pwede rin po yung ating postgraduate degree. Pwede din both, okay? Pwede degree lang natin sa college, pwede din yung postgraduate, pero pwede din both, okay? But most of the time, yung hinahanap lang naman ng employer is yung ating college uh, college degree. Bali si postgraduate degree pang supplemental na lamang, but remember also na si postgraduate degree may advantage din kasi merong ibang mga schools na they give credit to our postgraduate degree. Ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung sweldo mo kapag meron kang postgraduate na degree na maipipresenta sa kanila or may sasama doon sa iyong mga documents. So, minsan yung sahod, nagkakatalo lamang base doon sa ating range of teaching experience at sa ating educational qualification. So, pag may postgraduate degree ka, possible, possible na mas... Uh, may edge ka among any other aspiring applicants. Okay, pangalawa, the remarks, okay, the remarks in our TOR should be for employment abroad. You need to be very specific on that. Kapag nag-request ka sa school mo ng TOR, kinakailangan ang nakalagay doon ay for employ is for uh, employment abroad purposes or whatever. Basta for employment abroad siya. Kasi pag hindi yan naka for employment abroad, hindi yan tatanggapin ni uh, tawag dito ni DFA. Pangatlo, TOR or diploma must be certified by CHED or yung tinatawag nating CAV or Certification and 
uh, verification. So, napakalaga ng proseso na ito. So, mula sa school, isi-certify ng registrar yung ating mga papeles ng ating diploma at ng ating transcript. Pagkatapos, they will endorse that doon sa CHED for the verification uh, purposes. However, ang proseso nito ay magkakaiba depende sa school where we graduated. For example, kung ikaw ay nagtapos mula sa isang state university, automatic na si registrar na ang gagawa ng CAV. Okay? Parang binigyan na sila ng CHED ng uh, privilege na gawin yung CAV doon mismo sa registrar. So usually it will only take uh, around 2 or 3 days. So ganyan lamang ang range of time na hihintayin mo. However, kapag ikaw naman ay nagtapos mula sa isang private school or sectarian school, ang gagawin is that the same. I sa certify nila yung mga dokumento mo. Pero, yung iyong mga dokumento pagkatapos, ipapadala pa yan sa opisina ng CHED. Okay? Sa kung at saan pinakamalapit na CHED office na nasasakupan mo or within your uh, uh, region kung saan ka uh, nakatira. So, mula sa school register, ipapadala yan doon sa nearest na CHED office. Pagkatapos, doon gagawin ang CAV. So, that means to say na maghihintay ka ng matagal na pano like 2, 3 weeks or even uh, 1 month pero pwede din naman na ikaw mismo personal ang magpunta sa CHED to have your TOR and your transcript uh, verified pero kinakailangan manghingi ka sa school ng tinatawag na certificate to hand carry kasi hindi ka i-entertainin ni CHED kapag wala kang certificate to to uh, to hand carry from from the school, okay. So tapos pagkatapos na lahat ng proseso na yan, pwede na siyang ipa legalized. Remember also na yung mga dokumento na ito, yung diploma at transcript of school record dapat nakapaloob sa isang envelope, usually brown envelope. Tapos naka sealed, si school ang maglalagay ng silio at si uh, Chad, as I mean, si DFA lamang ang pwedeng magbukas ng mga papeles na yun or ng, ng, ng brown folder na yun. Tapos sa labas ng folder, dapat may nakalagay na transmittal. Nakaspecify doon yung address ng DFA na kung saan ilegalize yung iyong papeles. Kasi uh, sa Manila, merong dalawang branches. We have one in uh, uh, Paranaque um, and another one in... Uh, in, um, in the Manila City mismo, sa, sa, sa SM City, Manila. So, dapat naka-specify yan. Alright. So, here are the, the possible questions. So, ating sasagutin. How many copies should I provide? Only one. Okay, one is enough. Two is too much. Charot lang. Uh, one, one, uh, one copy lamang per, per document. It's already okay. Kasi, pag dinala mo na yan dito abroad, ipofotocopy lang naman yan, tapos yung original na mga nakaradribon, ibabalik yan sa'yo. Number two question, do I need to be an education graduate? No. So, ito yung usual na tinatanong na iba, Sir, I am a graduate of like this, business, nursing. So, yung mga kurso nila parang hindi, ah, talaga hindi related sa uh, education. It's okay okay lang yun. It's still uh, acceptable. Pero ibang mga schools na tumatanggap sila ng mga teachers kahit hindi, hindi sila mga talagang education graduate. But it's not a guarantee na talagang lahat ng school tatanggap. Kasi merong ibang school na uh, talagang nakaspecify sa kanilang requirement na dapat in, uh, education graduate ka talaga. Number three question. Do they accept non-English major? Of course. Hindi lang naman ang, ang Vietnam, hindi lang naman nag-open ng opportunity for teachers sa English. Sa um, ibang major, pwede din. Pero, like for example, math, science major, or physical education major, pwede. Okay? Ta ay, in, tumatanggap nga sila ng tawag dito, ng non-education graduate. Ikaw pa naman na education graduate, pero hindi ka lang English major. So, hindi ba? Number four, do I need to have a PRC license? No need. 
hindi nila nire-require yung PRC license dito. So, Pilipinas, it's a big deal na talagang hahanapan ka ng uh, PRC license pero dito sa Vietnam or even sa Thailand, I think, hindi na sila nagre-require ng PRC license. So, kahit hindi ka pasado sa board exam, uh, no need. Pero, meron din ibang schools na nasa list of requirements nila na dapat at least like, lisensyado kang uh, teacher from your home country. Pero, with or without, it still works. It's still okay. Alright. So, pangalawang requirement. TESOL or TF TEFL certificate. Okay? So, here are the things na dapat nating tandaan kapag tayo po ay kumuha ng TESOL course. Okay. So, first... TESOL is, uh, is required for non-native uh, teachers like us. Hindi tayo mga native speakers. Okay? Second speaker na tayo ng language. So, ng, ng English language. So, required sa atin ang magkaroon ng TESOL certificate. Pangalawa, uh, although yung Vietnam, hindi sila nag-require ng license natin, ng PRC license, pero yung parang pinaka-license natin dito to teach English is ang ating TESOL or TEFL certificate. Kaya nga sa mga nagtatanong na talaga bang kinakailangan may TESOL, is it really a must? Yes, of course. Kung gusto mo magkaroon ng advantage at ng edge among any other applicants, then you should invest okay, doon sa, sa TESOL. Anyway, TESOL is a lifetime, lifetime investment. It doesn't expire. Kung yung PRC natin, we need to renew it kasi nag expire Ang TESOL certificate, hindi po yan nag expire It is lifetime. Okay, third, uh, our TESOL must at least, okay, or must be at least 120 to 150 hours training. So, whether it's online or in class, it's okay. At least, hindi siya bababa ng 120 hours. Okay, and then, of course, it must be legalized also by the embassy or by the DFA. Okay, so kapag ikaw ay nasa Vietnam, pwede mo na siya ipalegalize sa, sa embassy na kung saan nag-originate si certificate. For example, si certificate, si TESOL certificate ay nag-originate mula sa America. So of course, pupunta ka ng US Embassy to have it legalized. You don't need to bring it sa Pilipinas just in case na so, nasa Vietnam ka na hindi mo na kinakailangan umuwi pa ng Pilipinas para siya ipa, uh, ipalegalize. Kung nasa Pilipinas ka, sa DFA mo siya ipapa legalized. Okay? So, questions. Is it really a must? Yes, of course. Kaya gaya nga naman sabi ko kanina, it will give you an edge among any other applicants na na uh, ta taong dito, yung iba walang teso, tapos ikaw may teso, so, mas advantage ka. Especially kapag nakalegalize yung teso mo, or si teso, yung teso certificate mo ay uh, kilala or Wildly, uh, uh, wildly accepted worldwide. Number two question, is TESOL certificate already enough to land a job in Vietnam? Of course, no. Although it is our license to teach, pero kinakailangan pa rin meron tayong um, enough, okay? Enough na, tawag dito, enough na requirement for us to, to land a job. Hindi pwedeng may TESOL lang. Diba minsan nakakatagap ako ng mga tanong, Sir, may TESOL na ako. Pwede na ba ako magtrabaho sa Vietnam? So, your TESOL, al uh, al TESOL alone is not a guarantee for you to land a job. Okay? Sa so, sinasabi ko sa inyo. Kasi you need to have also yung qualification like diploma. Pangalawa, you need to have experience. Okay? So, yung experience na yan, depende na yan kung uh, ano yung i-require ni, ni employer. Sometimes employer mag-require ng at least 2 years experience, 1 year experience, pero meron namang iba na hindi sila nagre-require ng work experience. Pero remember that TESOL certificate is not okay, a sole or requirement para ka makapagtrabaho sa Vietnam. Alright. Third question, is it required for acquiring work permit? Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. Kasi merong ibang, minsan ito yung isa sa mga bagay na nakakalito. Kasi merong ibang schools na kapag nag-apply sila ng work for, uh, work uh, permit for you, hindi na sila nagre-require ng TESOL uh, certificate. However, meron namang iba na talagang 
ire-require nila na dapat meron kang TESOL certificate. So, it's a case-to-case -case, uh, basis. Nakadepende yan sa, sa school. So, yun nga, sinasabi ko, much better na kung meron ka na kasi at least kapag hiningi ng school mo, then you can provide something for them. Hindi ka na nga, mga nga papa at, uh, di ba, uh, mapuforce na mag-take ng TESOL course. Kasi merong ibang ganyan na uh, kung kailan sila hinanapan ng TESOL, uh, tawag ito ng TESOL certificate, kasi kinakailangan niya sa work permit, saka lang din sila nag-take ng, ng TESOL. So, medyo matagal, di ba? Kasi, magtitake ka pa ng TESOL course, after that, ipapalegalize mo pa. So, you have to spend time and uh, money and effort for that. Kaya nga sinasabi ko sa mga nasa Pilipinas, habang nasa Pilipinas pa lang, you take TESOL course, mag-TESOL na kayo, ipalegalize sila para pagdating dito, wala nang hassle, wala nang sabit. Okay. Next question, should I take online or in-class TESOL course? It depends on you. Pero usually, yung iba online class lang kasi nga uh, si online class mas friendly siya doon sa mga taong busy or my work kasi yung hawak mo yung usually pag online class kasi hawak mo yung time mo so ikaw yung nakadepende sa iyo kung kailan mo gagawin at kailan mo tatapusin si TESOL course however kapag in class naman nakaset na yung yung petsa na kailan kayo magkakaroon ng klase So you need to attend the class or else you will you know you will miss the the lesson na dapat mong uh, tawag dito na dapat mong matutunan. And then si online class is mas cheaper compared sa kay in class kasi pag in class ikaw pa yung magbabayad ng uh, oras ng ng speaker or ng teacher niyo at the same time the venue or yung iba pang mga uh, expenses. But online or in in uh, in class na TESOL course okay, are, are both good. Okay? Depende lang sa iyo kung, kung alin ang mas preferable para sa iyo. Okay. Next question, will TESOL certificate give me advantage or edge? Yes, of course. Gaya ng napaliwano ko kanina, it will give you really a guarantee na may edge ka among any other uh, applicants. Okay? And then, where and when should I take TESOL course? Sa so, Pilipinas pa lang, mag na ng TESOL course. Huwag mo nang hintayin na nasa Vietnam ka sa kakalagahanap ng trabaho at the same time nagte-TESOL course ka. So, you have to, you know, you have to have it just in case ikaw ay nasa Pilipinas pa lang para at least pagdating mo dito sa Vietnam, prepared na lahat ng mga document. Can we legalize? Okay, the last question, can we legalize it in Vietnam? Yes, of course. So, punta ka lang sa respective embassy kung saan nanggaling yung iyong TESOL uh, certificate and then ipapaligalize mo doon. Alright. So, next, number three. Okay, number three requirement is the certificate of employment. Okay. So, ano ang purpose ni certificate of employment? First, It will support your claim of your work experience. Kasi nga, di ba, pag magsusulat ka ng, ng CV, sasabihin mo doon na meron akong 5 years, 6 years experience, ganito, ganyan. So, ngayon, si employer, your your uh, prospective employer, maghahanap ng proof kay, na, na, na magpapakita na talagang meron kang 5 years or 6 years na experience. So, ang proof na ito ay ito yung ating Certificate of Employment. Okay. So, sa ating Certificate of Employment, pangalawa, must clearly state the total number of your experience. So, like from the time you started and then sa time na nagtapos ka sa iyong uh, pinagtrabahoan before. So, dapat napaklaro uh, uh, yan. So, the, uh, from the date start to the date that you ended up. Kasi, doon natin makikita talaga yung total number of your experience. And of course, that certificate of employment must also be legalized by the DFA. Okay. So, questions. How many years of experience do I need to have? 
depende, depende sa ano yan, depende sa employer. Minsan pag mga university, they really require you to have like at least two to three years of relevant experience. Meron namang iba na one year experience is enough, three years, two years, at uh, even even uh, three or six months, okay na sa kanila. Or even talagang as in zero or no experience at all. Pero pag mas uh, marami kang experience, of course, mas uh, may edge ka. Okay? Number two question, I am a new graduate and have no experience. Can I also apply? Yes, you can apply. Pero uh, pahirapan. Okay? Hindi ko siya sinasabing madali, pero pahirapan. Tsaka kasi, just imagine na yung mga kasabayan mo may five years, three years, two years na experience, tapos here come you na walang walang experience so di ba if ikaw yung employer san sino ba yung mas ihahay mo si may experience o yung walang uh, walang experience minsan yun 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 ang tanong ng iba eh so, magaling naman ako i am very good at my craft i am a very uh, responsible teacher pero bakit hindi ako na hire baka nagkakatalo yan sa work experience mo okay so, number three, is online teaching or private tutorial experience counted? Mm, is online teaching or private tutorial experience counted? Minsan hindi. Merong ibang schools na hindi nila kinikredit yung online teaching or yung mga private tutorial. Gusto talaga nila na you are connected with a certain company na talagang actual kang nagtuturo, actual kang gumagawa ng mga lesson plan whatsoever or may actual na school. So, minsan, online teaching, hindi nila kinagrant yan. Pero, meron din naman iba na it's okay for them. As long as may pakita mo din sa kanila that you are, you are indeed a qualified applicant. So, it's okay. Diba? Tumatanggap nga sila ng mga walang experience, yung may online teaching experience pa kaya. Pero, it's not, it's not counted, okay? Usually, it's not counted. I've tried that, I, I've tried asking that before sa university where I am working if okay lang ba na uh, credit yung online teaching experience, sabi nila hindi. Kaya, kasi, um, this is not actual teaching uh, experience na meron ka. Ewan ko sa kanila, di ba? So, we just have to, you know, comply with their requirements and go with the flow. Okay, how about university, private, or public school teaching experience? Is it, is it accepted? Yes, of course, 100% accepted yan. As long as meron kang certificate of employment na maipapa kita. Alright, so, and one more thing, what if, okay, what if yun, meron iba minsan nagtatanong, Sir, I have two years experience in private, I have three years uh, experience in public school, and I have like this kind of experience also in other companies so he or she works in three companies so ibig sabihin magkakahiwala yung mga work experience niya so ano ba ang gagawin dyan so ang gagawin mo ngayon manghingi ka ng mga certificate of employment from from all of these okay of all of these company company 1, 2, and 3 i-compile mo isama mo siya pag i, we need to say isama or pag-isahin mo siya kapag pinalegalize mo na siya para at least accounted lahat. Okay? And then, number four, NBI clearance or criminal record. Okay? So, napakahalaga nito kasi uh, dapat nilang ma-verify na tayo ay walang kaso na iniwan sa Pilipinas and hindi tayo tumakas sa Pilipinas just because we have our uh, case filed against us. Okay, so number one, it will manifest that you are not a criminal. Okay, na hindi tayo mga criminal na credible tayo ng mga applicant and uh, maaasahan. Number two, must be original and legalized by DFA. So along with all other documents, yung iba, photocopy lang yun, like your diploma, TOR, TESOL, these are just photocopy. Ang tanging original lamang na ating ipapasa is yung ating uh, NBI clearance. So, wala na siyang mga, ano, wala na siyang, si NBI ang pinakamadaling ipalegalize kasi wala na mga attachment whatsoever. Okay? So, questions. How many copies should I secure? Only one. Okay? One is enough. Number two, is it really a must? Of course. Kasi part of the requirements yan eh. Hindi mo siya pwedeng skip or else uh, magkakaroon ka ng uh, problema. 
Number three, how long is the validity of NBI clearance in Vietnam? Although, yung nakalagay sa ating, ang tawag dito sa ating NBI clearance, it's valid for 12 months or 1 year, but ang validity niya dito sa Vietnam is only 6 months. Kaya may advice is, uh, saka ka lang kukuha ng NBI clearance kung malapit ka ng uh, bumiyahe. Okay? For example, Today, uh, right now is uh, November. Tapos, flight mo sa Vietnam, January. So, a week or a days prior sa flight mo, saka ka lang uh, kumuha ng NBI clearance. Kasi pag kumuha ka ngayon, November, December, January, so, merong dalawa o tatlong buwan na na siya na ma makoconsume. So, sayang. So, hindi na siya makakount. So, yan, yun kasi yung ginawa ko when I... Uh, went here. So, flight ko ng December 24, talagang Pasko-Pasko. So, pero mga December, ano, mga first week of December, kumuha ako ulit ng, ng MBI clearance. So, para at least hindi ako magkakaroon ng uh, problema. Actually, I have two. Yung isa, kinuha ko ng September. Pero when I did my research, sabi doon na six months na siya sa valid. So, sabi ko, most likely, hindi na ito tatanggapin sa Vietnam. So, I decided na kumuha ng bago. So, when I uh, actually applied for my my work permit and TRC, I presented both yung dalawang NBI clearance. So, yung isa ni reject, yung kinuha ko ng September kasi nga sabi ng, ng HR, hindi na siya pwede kasi um, pa-expire na siya. So, yung kinuha is yung December. So, just come to think of it, kung hindi ako kumuha ng NBI clearance noong December prior to my flight nagkaroon sana ako ng, ng problema dito sa Vietnam or na-delay yung pag-process ng aking papeles alright, so chika lang yan alright um, ano na ba, saan na ba tayo how long is the valid okay, last question, what should I do if I already, uh, if it is already expired, can I get one in Vietnam and what are the steps so, ito yung kadalasang tanong na ano, natatanggap ko, Sir, Val, uh, expired na yung NBI ko, anong gagawin? Please advise. So, kung nag-expire na si, uh, tawag dito, si NBI, pwede kang kumuha ng uh, criminal record check dito sa Vietnam, but provided that you have already stayed here for uh, two, three, or four, or five months. Mga ganyan. Okay, so, pwede na siya. So, here are the steps na dapat nating tandaan or mga key points na dapat inyong tandaan kapag tayo ay kumuha ng criminal check in Vietnam. So, in the, in the event that your NBI clearance is already expired, we have two options. Option number one, get a new one from the Philippines. Pero take note na magastos at magkaho ito. Bakit? Kasi unang-una, you have to secure an SPA or yung tinatawag ting special power of attorney from the consulate kapag ikaw ay nasa Ho Chi Minh or sa embassy kapag ikaw naman ay nasa Hanoi and send it in the Philippines via courier. So pupunta ka ngayon ng embassy or ng consulate mag uh, tawag dito sabihin mo doon na mag ano ka pagawa ka ng SPA para sa relatives mo or family members sa Pilipinas para makunan ka ng NBI, magbabayad ka ng 600 VND per copy. At sa pagkakaalam ko, usually dalawang copy ang, ang uh, nire-require nila. So you really need to pay 1, 1.2 million. So how much is that, diba? Mga 2,500 pesos na rin yan, more or less, sa Pilipinas. So ang mahal. Whereas sa Pilipinas, magkano lang. So, yun nga. Tapos, pag Yung processing ng, ng SPA is like 5 or 7 working days. Tapos balikan mo siya, kunin mo, tapos ipapadala mo siya sa Pilipinas by a courier. Depende kung EMS or DHL or whatsoever. So panibagong gastos na naman yun. And then you have to designate a member in the Philippines to have it processed sa Pilipinas. So pag nakakuha ka na doon, uh, for example, may designate ka na na tawag dito, excuse me, relatives mula doon sa Pilipinas, tapos uh, papadala mo dito sa uh, Vietnam ulit, 
naka dapat naka-legalize na siya sa DFA. So ipapa-redribute mo siya ulit. So just imagine yung yung process mula sa Vietnam plus yung process sa Pilipinas medyo medyo matagal tapos yung gastos. Okay? So that's option number one. But option number two is a lot easier. Okay? So option number two. Secure a criminal record check from the Justice Department. Okay? So you, uh, you can do it personally or with an agent. So unang-unang gagawin mo is ask for a police check record from your landlady or landlord. So you need to pay around 200 VND more or less depende sa <clears throat> tawag dito depende sa price na itatalaga ng ng ng, ng police. Okay? But usually nasa 200 lang din yung yung babayaran. So that is why I'm trying to also uh, what I'm also trying to remind sa iba na pag mag uh, rent ng bahay dito sa Vietnam, you have to make sure na si landlady or si landlord makakapag-provide ng police check record or yung tinatawag natin TAMP2. In, in their terms, it's called TAMP2 or police, uh, police check. Okay. Kasi kakailanganin mo yan just in case you need to have a criminal record. Pangalawa, go to the justice. So, for example, nakakuha ka na. So, next step na gagawin mo is go to the Justice Department and request for a criminal record check. So, ang mga requirements na hihingin ay yung police check record at the same time, your your original passport and then the 200 VND. Pagdating mo doon, magre-register ka online and then you have to comply all the instruction given by the Justice Department. You have to wait for 2 to 3, 5 days uh, working days for your criminal record check to be to be released. Take note also that you must have stayed in Vietnam. Yung sinabi ko niya, 3 or uh, 3 months or more para ka makakuha ng criminal record check. Pero may ibang cases naman na yung iba kahit 1 month pa lang sila sa Vietnam nakakuha na sila ng uh, criminal record check. Okay. So, and one more thing. If you opt to work with an agent, Okay, which is mas madali. You just need to provide a copy of your passport. So no need for a police check. And it costs around 2 to 3 million depende sa sa presyo na hihingi na agent. Pero usually nandiyan uh, it ranges from 2 to 3 million VND and would usually take like 7 to 10 days. So all of the options are already given to you. So just in case na uh, magkakaroon ka ng problema sa iyong police uh, check record you can follow some of these uh, advices or tips and pang lima medical record okay so ang medical record po ay kinakailangan for the work permit application so isa, iso, isa ito sa mga pinaka mahalagang uh, dokumento na i-require sa atin ng employer natin ang ating medical record for them to know that we are physically and mentally fit to work Pangalawa, ang medical record dapat naka-state siya in English and in Vietnamese. Hindi pwedeng Vietnamese lang, hindi pwedeng naka-English lang. Dapat it must be stated in both languages. Kapag kinuha mo yung iyong medical record from Vietnam, no need to be legalized. Okay? And then, it is only valid for 6 months. And then, uh, one more thing, you have to make sure that the hospital is accredited. Kasi mayroong ibang hospital na hindi sila accredited ng school or ng labor department ng Vietnam. Kaya most likely mare-reject yung kanilang medical records. So sayang yung pera at yung effort. And um, here, a tip. Undergo a medical exam in the Philippines to make sure that you are fit to work. Kasi mayroong iba na dito na lamang nila sa Vietnam na didiscover na meron pala silang mga ganitong sakit whatsoever. Tapos hindi sila mabibigyan ng work permit kasi they are not uh, fit to work. So habang sa Pilipinas pa lamang have yourself checked, okay? Para at least malaman mo kung papasa ka ba dito sa uh, Vietnam. Simple lang naman yung gagawin na mga medical check dito. For the, the, just the very basic, like blood test, um, ear, nose, and uh, mouth check, mga ganyan. Tapos, eyes, ano pa ba, x-ray, sometimes ultrasound, 
yung mga basic lang na mga na mga medical check. So, my advice is sa mga nasa Pilipinas, magpa-check na kayo before going to Vietnam just to make sure that you are physically fit. Baka kasi dito na kayo magkaka um, uh, problema. You right? So, questions. When and where should I secure a medical check? Kaya na nasabi ko nga sa Pilipinas magpa-check ka na. Okay? Pero hindi mo yung result na yan just is just for for your own consumption, for your own benefit. Kasi hindi mo siya siya pwedeng ibigay sa employer mo kasi nga hindi siya naka naka Vietnamese at hindi siya naka uh, legalized. Okay. So where uh, uh, when should I when and where? So balik tayo sa question nito. Saka ka lang magpapa medical check kapag ni-require ka na ni employer. Okay? Like for your employer or say we are going to apply for your work permit so we need your medical record. So saka ka lang magpapa check kasi it's only valid niya for for 6 months. Kapag nag-exceed na yan, you need to undergo another check up. Okay, what are the requirements? Only your passport. So, punta ka sa hospital, dala ka ng passport, sabihin mo na magpapa-medical check ka for your work permit. However, meron mga hospitals na uh, tawag dito, magsiset ka ng appointment with them. So, mag email ka lang sa kanila kung kailan yung <coughs> preferred date mo ng uh, examination right and there are also some schools na tawag dito irerefund nila yung magagastos mo sa medical so you need to get the information from them like the name of the company the tax code and the address kasi ilalagay mo yan doon sa yung application form sa hospital para ma-reimburse or ma-refund yung gagastusin mo sa medical check-up. Pero, meron din ibang schools na hindi sila nag-refund. So, sarili mong pera ang gagamitin mo. How much would it cost? Depende po sa hospital. Okay? Like for example, I tried before in uh, Anseng Hospital in Funyang, Funyang District. I'm not sure if tama yung pagkakabigas ko. Well, anyway, ang binayaran ko doon nung una ko medical check is like 1.7 million. Mga more or less ganyan. Tapos just um, recently, I had my another check up for another work permit application sa isang school. I only paid 1.4 billion VNB. Okay, so but refunded yun ang school. Okay, so how long will it take? So, yung pag-check uh, up, usually mga 1 or 2 hours lamang yun, di ba? Uh, tapos, uh, yung result naman, makukuha mo siya within 2 to 3 days. Depende sa isiset ng hospital na, na, na date na pwede mo nang balikan yung uh, resulta. Okay? Do I need to set an appointment sa ibang hospital? Yes, sa ibang hospital hindi na diretso ka na doon, bigay mo yung passport mo, bayad ka, and then have yourself uh, checked. Okay, what are the instances that an applicant will be unfit for work? Dito sa Vietnam, maa-unfit for work ka lamang kapag na-discovery ng mga doktor o nala nakita sa resulta na ikaw ay may nakakahawang sakit. So, kapag yung sakit mo ay high blood lang naman, or di may tooth decay, or migraine, or whatever, hindi yan makaka-apekto po. Yung mga sakit lamang na tuberculosis, uh, HIV, or AIDS, mga ganyan na nakakahawa, yun lamang po ang uh, magiging dahilan na tayo ay magiging unfit to work. Pero pag wala kang ganyan, then of course you are safe. Okay, so mga reminders, okay? Mga friendly reminders po. First, all documents must be already legalized in the Philippines prior to going abroad. So please, please have your documents legalized sa Pilipinas pa lamang po para hindi kayo magkakaroon ng problema. Minsan, nakakanagap ako ng mga question sa, Sir, saan po dito sa Vietnam pwede ipalegalize ang paper? Wala pong ganyan dito sa Vietnam. It's only in the Philippines. Sa Pilipinas lamang tayo pwedeng magparidribon or magpa-apostel. Pagdating dito sa Vietnam, wala nang ganyan. So, pag nagpunta ka ng Vietnam, yun, yung mga document mo plain, walang, hindi siya na-legalize or hindi siya na-apostel, then, it's useless. 
Okay, it's, it's, it's useless. Although magagamit mo siya for your application purposes, pero pag nag-apply ka na ngayon ng work permit at ng PRC, doon ka magkakaroon ng problema kasi hindi nila tatanggapin ang hindi naka-legalize from our home country. Okay, pangalawa, provide SPA or yung tinatawag na special power of attorney for your family members so that they can legally transact on your behalf sa Pilipinas. So, yun po yung uh, aking ginawa. Nag Before ako pumunta ng Vietnam, nagpagawa ako ng SPA. So, ginawa ko yung... Uh, at parang, parang nilagay ko yung lahat ng family members ko doon from my mother, father, at mga, mga kapatid ko. So, that all of them can transact okay, on, on my behalf sa Pilipinas. Tapos, nakastate na doon Okay, naka-state, naka naka-itemize ano yung mga uh, tawag dito mga legal transactions na pwede nilang gawin on my behalf. So, hindi para hindi ako nag magka, magka problema just in case may needed ako na document from the Philippines or need na ipalegalize or, or whatsoever. So, although my paper that time was already legalized, prepared na ang lahat, but then still, nagpagawa ako ng SPA for my family members so that uh, anumang problema sa Pilipinas, uh, they, can, they can transact okay? on, on, on my behalf. So, you might also uh, do the same. Pagawa ko kayo ng, 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 ng SPA sa mga members, uh, family members po ninyo sa, sa Philippines. Just in case a need arise na talagang kinakailangan, at least... Uh, sila mismo ang makakagawa para sa atin. Okay, and then number three, have all your documents stamped. So, after mo siya pina, pinalegalize, pinaredribon, ang gagawin mo ngayon, punta ka ng Philippine, uh, I don't know, uh, punta ka ng Vietnamese Embassy sa Pilipinas, bigay mo yung mga pinaredribon mo mga documents for the uh, stamping. So, doon sa likod ng dokumento, lalagyan nila doon ng stamp that it was also uh, legalized and acknowledged by the Vietnam Embassy to be used in uh, Vietnam. Para hindi na po tayo uulit pa sa the same na proseso pagdating sa Vietnam. Kasi, here's the thing. Kapag yung, yung papeles mula sa Pilipinas ay uh, nakared ribbon lamang, wala siyang Vietnam, nakastam, hindi siya nakastam sa Vietnamese Embassy, Ang mangyayari, kapag ikaw ay nag-apply na ng work permit or ng PRC dito sa Vietnam, pupunta ka ulit ng consulate or ng embassy at ipaparedribon ulit yung naredribon mo ng dokumento. After that one, pupunta ka ng MOFA or Ministry of Foreign, uh, Foreign Affairs for the stamping and for the translation. So, medyo magastos, medyo matagal ang ang proseso. However, kapag ikaw ay nakastamp na yung dokumento mo from the Philippines, pagdating mo dito ng Vietnam, diretso ka na ng MOFA for translation and for filing na for your TRC. So, hindi ka na maghihintay ng masyadong matagal. At take note na ang pagpapastamp dito sa Vietnam at ang pagpalelegal at pagpapalegalize sa embassy or sa consulate mas mahal compared sa Philippines. So, my advice is that sa Pilipinas pa lamang po, have all your documents prepared, nakalegalize na, nakastamp na. Kasi, di ba, trabaho punta mo dito. Hindi mo na gustong mahassle yung, yung sarili mo or you have to, you know, spend more money para sa uh, mga proseso. So, there you have it guys and I hope na naipaliwanag ko ng mabuti yung mga basic requirements pertaining to application as a teacher in Vietnam. And I hope also na nasagot ko yung inyong mga katanungan. So, in case na meron pa kayong mga clarifications and questions, please, please comment down in this video para po ating ma-address ang inyong mga katanungan. And in this note, I would also like to... Uh, say thank you sa lahat ng mga Filipino expats uh, member. So, patuloy po ninyong i-follow, i-like, and i-share ang ating page. And of course, uh, please also share my YouTube channel para at least mas marami tayong ma-reach, mas marami tayong uh, mas matulungan pa. And sa mga gusto pang sumani sa ating page, welcome po ang lahat. 
Hanapin nyo lamang po sa Facebook ang Filipino Expats in Vietnam. So we have our group and we have also our page. And I am also doing blogs. Kung may time kayo, kindly check out my blog also for more information about uh, application abroad. So I'm going to uh, attach the link below on this video. And of course, sa ating next video, atin po pag-uusapan ang authentication process of uh, the document. So, ganyan ang ating gagawin sa ating mga series of videos. Uh, atin pong hihimayin, ipapaliwanag ang mga bagay-bagay from uh, the first step, second, third, and so on. Thank you everyone for watching and God bless us all.